What is up, beautiful people? It's Mizgo here. Now, over the weekend, I had a few of my Figma Masterclass students ask me a few questions around responsive grid layouts. Where do these numbers come from? Why is it 329 pixels? Why this? Why that? So in this video, I want to break down and help explain to you exactly how these responsive grid layouts actually work, the mechanics behind them, and how do all these numbers actually add up. So let's dive right in. And before I walk you through the actual question that Pedro asked um, over the weekend, let me show you the design so you understand what we're actually talking about. So as you can see here in this file, um, this is actually one of the projects that my students will uh, create in the course. As you can see that everything snaps um, responsively to the actual grid and also within the design. So his question, right? So understanding this, and, you, and one quick thing is, if I select this photo right here, as you can see this one, you can see that the width of this photo is 329 pixels. So if we jump over to Pedro's question, he's asking in the, well, on the responsive four cold layout video on chapter four, which is this exercise, while building columns on top of the 1440 pixel grid layout, Mizco set them to 329 pixels wide to accommodate for the spaces between them. But why 329 pixels? I tried creating boxes that would fit precisely within the three columns, so in here, on the grid and width would be 332 pixels for each of them. Is there a reason to make the columns slightly shorter than those grid? And then you can see that Julian also followed up saying that um, he did the same thing as well. And then I pretty much made a video for them. And generally when my students ask me questions, I'll make a video to explain to them exactly so they truly understand it. And then they actually understood why it all happened. So they can, you can see that Pedro understands it, Julian now understands it as well, and also Ben. Now I think it's really important for you to understand a bit of the mathematics behind grid layouts because this is going to make you a better UI designer and it's also going to make you absolutely legendary and you're going to be a bit of a mathematician as well. So there's a win-win situation here. So let's jump right into this and let me break it down in a very simple uh, process for you. So let me go ahead and jump into my Figma and you can see I've got some text on the right hand side which we'll go through right after. But let's remember, right? Here's a canvas. It's a canvas of 1440 pixels. And when we want to create a grid layout, I'm going to go ahead and create a grid layout. So change the grid to columns. I'm going to change it, the columns to 12 because we want 12 columns. Keep it to stretch. Make the margins 32 and the gutters 20 pixels, right? Could be 16, 20, whatever you want. Now, here is the, here's the thing, right? When I scale this down or I scale it up, you can see that the columns are actually responsive. They're dynamic, right? So depending on the viewport, how much space that we can design in, the columns will scale accordingly. So they're perfectly balanced within 12 columns within whatever er uh, designable area that we have to work with. So this is what you have to remember. Now, the first thing you need to understand, right? So let me just quickly change over to my pen. This canvas, right? There is a total area of designable space, right? So the, the actual width of this is 1440, let's do the numbers, so 1440 pixels wide, right? And what we actually told Figma, we never told Figma how wide these columns should be. Because if we did, then the actual number that we use, let's say for example, just example sake, 80 pixels, right? then if we ever decide to make this um, smaller or larger, so let me just quickly uh, reduce this this to that, then you the actual columns will always stay as 80 pixels and they won't scale responsively. So instead, if you actually remember what we told Figma, we just told Figma that we want margins to be 32, right? And we wanted the, um, the actual gutters to be 20 pixels. So if you understand that we have two gutters and then 11 margins, right? So 20, 20, 20, 20, and there's 11 of them there. So if we do the maths, right? If we want to calculate how much space that we can actually design in, right? So what I'm referencing is the red columns, like how much space is in this red column, instead of giving Figma a fixed pixel measurement, we instead tell them how much unavailable space there is. So the margins and the gutters. So let's remember, there's 32 uh, pixel gutters and there's two of them. So that equals to 64 pixels. And then in terms of the actual margins, right? There are 20, there are 20 pixels and there's 11 of them. So in total, there is 220 pixels in terms of margins. 
Now, if you actually do the calculations, if you plus the margins with the gutters, right? So remember, all this white space that we don't, we can't actually design in because they're dedicated to space. You have 64 plus 222. So that actually equals to 284 pixels that we cannot design in, right? So total, we have 1,440 pixels total area. Then we have 284 pixels that we can't design in. So what does that mean? If we, if we want to then calculate how much space we can design in, right? The available space, we have to go what's 1440 minus the space that we can't design in. So if we grab this entire space and we minus all the little gutters and margins in between, we then have, let's just do the calculation. I might even just use a calculator really, really quickly, minus 284. Then we have 1,156, right? So 1,156 pixels that we can actually design in. So the available available space would be 1,100, 1,156 pixels, okay? So hopefully by now you're still following along. It's not rocket surgery, right, uh, just yet. So now that we know, now that Figma knows that there is 1,156 uh, pixels worth of space and real estate that we can design in, we want to split this amount of space into 12 columns, okay? Right, so there's 12 columns. So let's do that right now. So let's go ahead and go 1,156 divided by 12. We then have 96.3, right? So there's 12 columns, right? And in each column, it's going to be 96.3. So 96.3 in here, 96.3 in here, 3, 96.3, and so on, right? So all that makes up 1,156, okay? So if we want to calculate, if we reference that design again, three columns, right? This column over here, if we want to calculate the distance from here to here, then all we have to do is, what is 96? 0.3, right, times three, but then we also wanna plus the space in between, right? So we can't forget the space that we have in here, the margins. So that is 20 times two, because there's two margins. So if we calculate all this together, right? So let's actually do this without a calculator because we are absolutely legendary designers, guys. So let's do this. Let's go at 96.3 times three. Okay, so three times three is nine, three times six is 18, right, with the decimal place. Three, three times nine is 27, plus one is tw uh, 28, right? So we have 288.9. Then we also want to plus 40, right? So 20 times two is 40. So we're going to plus that onto the 288.9. Then we have eight, right? Eight plus four is 12. One plus two is three. 328.9. So if you round that up to zero decimal places, then we have 329 pixels. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding, right? So 329 pixels is the exact number from here to here, as you can see. So hopefully by now you truly understand how the mechanics work behind responsive layouts and also responsive grid layouts to make you a legendary UI designer, guys. All right, now if you made it this far, I would love to know what did you do this weekend? For me, we finally, after four months, got out of lockdown in Sydney, Australia, and my partner and I went to the movies, and we finally got to watch a Marvel movie, Shang-Chi. Loved it. Probably one of the best movies I've seen this year, or well, probably the only movie that I've actually seen in the cinemas this year. Let me know in the comments below if you've seen it as well. I'll see you in the next video very soon, guys. What the?